Уважаемые коллеги, еще раз доброе утро. Еще раз огромное спасибо за приглашение участвовать в вашей замечательной конференции. Я хочу передать огромный привет от директора нашего центра. All right, Bridge on behalf of our center. We will be talking about pamphoresis and ozonal therapy. And I would like to wish uh, us uh, success and we want all these methods to be used in our clinical practices. Uh, the problem of infertility in marriages is eternal. Never does it go down or is it mitigated. In some regions, though, the rate of infertile marriages never goes down but goes up up to 20 percent so the whole world is now starting to use the technologies like extracorporeal insemination embryo look relocation or additional reproductive technologies however unfortunately their efficacy no matter what we do of this extracorporeal insemination is not that high it's about 30 to 40 percent uh, percent just a month ago we had a conference in Nufile which saw the union of our specialist reproductologists um, from our association. It was brought up that uh, the efficacy of these programs is about uh, 40 percent to 30 percent give or take depending on the group of patients you're dealing with. As uh, for the reasons behind the ineffectiveness there is a lot of them. Uh, One of the main uh, reasons is uh, the inflammations in the womb area, which allow to chronic, which lead to uh, chronic endometritis, which leads to infertility. And these patients come to us for laparoscopy. We do some bariolysis. Uh, we improve the passage, but you can see after these surgeries, is not that high. It's about 25-30 percent. And these patients later. Uh, resort to extracorporeal therapies or use additional reproductive technologies. But those who deal with gynecology and obstetrics, so they know very well what kind of group of patients I'm talking about when you have a patient uh, you know, of 42 years um, old with a long inflammation after three laparoscopies, get a sophoscopy and she wants to have a baby. As a result, we see the complications that we have now. You could get the circulation of our outer antibodies, immune complexes, antiphospholipid antibodies. Uh, these, uh, all these disorders happen in the immune system and uh, intravascular coagulation problems, uh, problems in the hemostasis. We have thin endometrium because of chronic endometritis problems uh, with the receptor problem of the intermetrium uh, after two abortions for example and the, so the intermetrium doesn't work properly any longer and no, no matter what we do to, to get these patients pregnant we fail and all these patients are very hard to deal with and all the people engaged in, in corporal insemination no but first I have to do deep into the reasons behind the efficacy of the treatment of uh, infertility treatment uh, and we have patients uh, in our unit who sometimes uh, go at it a few times but um, these programs fail uh, the uh, largest number of um, tries in terms of extracorporeal insemination was at uh, 20 times so one patient had tried it 30 times but it never worked out so there is a lot of factors that lead uh, to the infancy and we believe in our unit uh, is that uh, the reason for us to work systemically by methods of uh, extracorporeal hemochoresis, by plasmapheresis and plasma exchange uh, and of course we also use uh, quantum hemotherapy methods ultraviolet and laser and ozone therapy which we also use systematically we give also nice saline um, intravenous um, solutions um, sometimes interwomb intervaginally and interperitoneally uh, during the laparoscopy surgery 
so we uh, analyzed um, a number of studies and our goal was uh, to increase the efficacy of exocorporeal separation after a long information after patients with information we combined plasmapheresis and a zone therapy we started out with plasmapheresis so then we included um, uh, ozone therapy ozone therapy in the equation you can see a number of studies here one included plasmapheresis and ozone and the second group had um, was on drugs those who know such clinics and uh, know that includes anti the, uh, antibiotics, uh, disaggregants, uh, anticoagulation, and a lot of other drugs uh, which uh, improve the efficacy, as it would seem. So, the criteria for selection would be infertility, long term infertility, uh, a few uh, successful attempts at extracorporate insemination are also necessary criteria. So, we did a plasmapheresis uh, pr procedure on these patients. The exfusion was 24-30%. Uh, the replacement here was performed by ozone, uh, saline, ozonized uh, saline, and colloid saline, not to get epivolamy. And intervaginal uh, irrigation was also performed. We use the physiological saline or ozonized saline or ozonized distilled water. Their second group was on different drugs. After these patients were prepared in the next cycle, ovulation and stimulation so were performed. So here it could be decoded pipipil and other different drugs or different modifications. Here you can see the medium age, it's a 30 years. And uh, the uh, length of infertility is six, uh, is about six years, and we can see this uh, a long uh, adhesive process three, thirty-nine to sixty percent. Also, in the analysis, have tonsillitis, laryngitis, a lot of um, like chronic cystitis cases. So these uh, patients uh, have had um, inflammation uh, disorders for a long time. As for viruses, it's a separate subject. Cytomegalovirus and simple herpes. You can see uh, these viruses in our patients quite a lot. Sometimes uh, these patients get uh, lab activations when we use hemoglobin uh, GNM for that, and uh, we also uh, take a swab from the vagina for viruses. So before we start uh, using our start the treatment of uh, infertility and if we find viruses we have to um, uh, remove the viruses first. We used ozone here and here performed an intervaginal irrigation of by saline, uh, by ozonized saline. Also the hemostasis system is very important here because we work with blood because of these patients uh, mostly had a tom bina emia hyperstarco hyperabdulations and and other disorders in the hemostasis system, but uh, they had no thrombotic complications. Hmm. But as soon as we started uh, the stimulation of ovulation by hormones, uh, the hypercoagulation uh, ability of the blood spikes, uh, which leads uh, um, to thrombotic complications like thrombosis of the vessels of uh, placenta, and sometimes uh, to into a fetal death uh, of the fetus um, um, on the child inside. Uh, so hemostasis system is important here because uh, after we had looked at the hyper aggregation, it was uh, found only in 30 percent, but in 70 percent it was within the norm. But uh, if we start uh, doing individual analysis of these uh, indicators, it's either hyper coagulation. Uh, the development cofactor is high. Anticoagulant was there in 20%. So we, in our center, we do a tombo elastography, which speaks to the aggregation capability of the blood and its thrombodynamic potential. You see, when we studied these factors like thrombin, antithrombin, and antihyperin factor of thrombocytes or platelets. 
These are the markers of early activation of platelets um, in the blood in general. You can see that the type patients, um, their number was higher than in the control group, so they already had tombinaemia, but it was subcompensated, which I will also talk about. So the, we had interesting studies. Oh, I pushed the wrong button. On uh, the invest in terms of the investigation functional, uh, using we use this uh, f uh, for the study of um, platelets. We use this uh, phasometric uh, approaches, and the patients uh, who suffer uh, that were infertile, uh, tomb peritoneal fertility, we had a lot of activated. Uh, Platelet in just the cases, uh, they were less uh, platelets uh, in uh, quiet forms, and the rest uh, were within the norm. So, this is uh, all infertile women had all mature platelets, very little, very few young platelets were found in these women, but they were mature and active, and that's why we get complications that happen because of the stimulation of ovulation. So, uh, phasometry of platelets is uh, quite a sensitive method that can, at early stages, I tell you about the activation of the cellular chain of hemostasis, which is something to be kept in mind by specialists who work with extraoperal methods. You need to pay attention to that. And uh, because of this, we see that there is an activation of intervascular coagulation at early stages of the therapy, tombianemia, uh, more substrates and cofactors of coagulation, and uh, relative tundus to the path there. It leads to the changes in the morphometric properties of platelets, which you just saw. How do these methods uh, affect the hemostasis system? They also know what uh, hemophoresis methods are, they know it very well. We remove the plasma, we remove the coagulation factors, and then we use solutions, hemo dilution happens. But if we use ozonized solutions, we see the, the reinforcing action of uh, plasmaphoresis and ozones. Activation of protein, different coagulants, and the activity of cofactor will a brand go down. This is uh, the mechanism of action. Even if you have not applied ozone, you will still have the effect uh, of uh, the plasma phoresis impacting the system of hemostasis, which is uh, uh, how it works. But ozone always uh, triggers uh, the action of uh, their action. Tomba elastography, you can see the term of so tomba dynamic potential goes down, and may goes down, and RK indicator goes down as well. And uh, tombin and anti tombin markers, we here create hemodilution, we see a decrease in the factors of concentration of tombin and anti tombin, and PF4 activity, which is anti hyperbrain factor 4, which has to go down because it. Uh, uh, says that it's a tombolytic property, so the tombolytic properties of the blood here in this case are more active than before the treatment. Well, the most important thing is because of the uh, action of hem hemothoresis and also nice saline methods, we see that the active uh, forms of platelets have gone down and the uh, quiet tombocytes have gone up, so we can see how, the hem how it affects the hemostasis system and the cell chain. After the drug therapy, we saw some results also. But look at the load, um, like the conception. Um, we see uh, corticosteroids that uh, had immune suppression, antibacterial therapies, antiviral therapies uh, were given to patients. The medic drug load was high, but there was no effect. You can see the early tombin and anti tombin in PF4 markers, hemostasogram shows you also some aggregation there and decreases in it. The effect of the drug therapy is there, but uh, what would be the effect uh, is uh, concerning the pregnancy phase, and I would like to show it to you. Uh, the During the stimulation phase, after preparation, with 
we send our women at this stage a check to corporal labs and they start the stimulation of relation by hormones before the treatment. <coughs> the levels were high and then they went down. The main group is the red one. You can see that our values are lower than the values of the drug therapy. The most interesting thing is the effective cycle. The patients uh, got pregnant, those who got pregnant are more red. And the uh, yellow is increased, the dosages of anti-vagulant therapy increases so we can convert that the simulation of relation by hormones activates the hemostatic system and by increasing markers in intravascular and needs antivagular therapy. All the, ther all the particles use the same therapy and if you didn't have this therapy in the, in the clinic, Planiferas therapy is, should be performed and the pregnancy, what did we strive for? The pregnancy in our group started in 51%, medicament group 42%, but the most Persolution syndrome was uh, had 80%. Reproduction loss on early stages uh, in the second third semester is lower than in the group that was treated by overall therapy, the pregnancy um, giving birth rate. As you can see on the screen, our group 84%, the second group 71%. The conclusion is that the group fertility is a multi-factor group and eco program has to be prepared, otherwise there is no effect or zero effect. Inferent therapy combined with other therapies provide sufficiency of the therapy. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> Questions if you have any questions, please make sure you address them to the speaker uh, after he he's made his speech. So if there are any questions, please address them to him. The question of giving birth is a very important I would like to note that it is very complicated one. It's not easy to solve the, the issues. That's why we have such methods such a echo. I've managed to treat 16 women with infertilities and now they have one of them or one or two kids. If you would really like to know my opinion, I would like to share it with you. Forget about time limits. That it's an that is an important question. Dear colleagues, is there any more questions? One remark as for the age. According to press and televisions, many people, many women give birth at, at 60 years old. You can sort of get, you can imagine sort of get some donation rate now. We had, we have had an issue when there was a patient, she was 75 and she wanted to make eco. Is there any like um, special prices for, for such women? No, only for invalids. And so we, if you are young, that's okay to to go through this program after 40 years. But after 40 years, after reaching 40 years old, the method is not effective. And we talk about donation in this case.